Hey guys, it's Don here from Nova Spirit Tech and welcome back to the channel. And today we are going to be installing some virtual machines on Linux. So let's get started. Now, to be honest, this is a stepping stone to a couple of other video ideas that I have, including GPU pass-throughs and stuff like that. But we will have to be able to set up our Linux machines to be able to run virtual machines so we could do that. But before that, a word from my sponsor. If you guys are not using VPNs please do so because that is the best way to mash yourself from your ISPs or wherever you are. If you're in like a public cafeteria or Starbucks or something like that, you want to be able to encrypt your data so nobody can see what you're doing. And one of the best ways is to get a VPN. And what I use is private internet access. Now, if you've been a long time viewer of this channel, you probably know I've been using it for about eight years. I have no issues with it. And with the recent updates that they have and the ability to use WireGuard, I'm getting four times the speed as I was before. Yeah, it's, it's just free improvement basically and having that amount of bandwidth allows me to stream high quality content now private internet access is basically worldwide they have almost 10,000 servers in 70 different countries and I'm not even saying this with like some prompt or something like that I just know this because I've been using them for so long if you see my previous video way back when I think a year ago they were only allowing five devices for one account and now they up that they put 10 devices per account so you could actually get more devices they also support every operating system that's out there which is windows mac os ios android linux raspberry pi anything that you can think of it will work on it so you don't have to worry about that they also have 24 hour support so if you run into any issues and i actually have ze almost zero downtime i mean there are times where it's down and i know that they're doing upgrades but it'll switch the server and i have no issue and if you're using the desktop app there's the ability to disconnect your internet if the vpn does go down another big thing about this company why i chose to use it is because they have no logs if i don't want the cafeteria or the cafe or any my isp to know what i'm doing i wouldn't want them to know either so they have no logs whatsoever it also allows for p2p and if you guys don't know what that is don't worry about it my main usage scenario for this sometimes is to move to another country so i could watch stuff that's available in different places that's not available in the states but yeah you could do that with this as well and best of all if you're using the link down in the description below you get three free months of private internet access. So not only do they have a 30 day money back guarantee, you also get three free months. So really you have nothing to lose. Okay, so the machine that I'm gonna be using today is a machine that you've probably seen here before, which is my Ryzen 1700, 16 gigs of RAM, uh, 512 NVMe, and uh, RX 570 AMD GPU. I am running Ubuntu 20.04 on kernel 5.6. So if you guys run into issues with later kernels, uh, just keep in mind I'm using 5.6. The software we're gonna be using today is QEMU, which is a type two slash type one hypervisor, which is a preferred choice if you're gonna be using Linux compared to VM player or VirtualBox, including the fact that we could actually switch between type 2 and type 1 anytime we want. That's one of the things I like about QEMU. If you want to know more about that, you could probably Google it and see what type 1 and type 2 is. But yeah, we're going to be jumping right into it. So here we have my desktop. And the first thing I'm going to do is pop into terminal and install a little program called CPU checker. This way it would tell you if your motherboard's set up for KVM or if it's not, then you might have to set some options in the BIOS itself. So to do this, we're going to do sudo apt install cp you checker and once you install this little program you get this program called kvm okay so i'm going to run that right now and there we have it kvm exists and kvm acceleration can be used at this point we're ready to set up and install our program so we could do sudo app install qemu kvm lib vert daemon Daemon, daemon system. I can't type today. Lib vert clients and bridge utils vert install. And then last but not least, vert manager. It's gonna cost us about 124 megabytes of space. And I'm just gonna let this go through. It shouldn't take too long especially on this um, computer. All right, now that's done installing, I ran into a little bit of an error right over here. I'm not sure if that's gonna affect anything in my case because I am using a different generic kernel because I have to roll back to it. Uh, let's see. Let's see, sudo system ctl is active lib vert d. Okay, 
uh, it seems like it's working, it's active. So let's move on to adding our user to the group. So we're gonna do sudo user mod dash a g lib vert. And the user is gonna be done. And the next one would be kvm and the user is also done. And that's basically about it. From here on, if everything is working, we should be able to run our vert machine, you see. And if it's not connected, I did run into this issue before on another machine that I was testing and all it was was a reboot. So I'm gonna give that a go. All right, we are back after a quick reboot and I'm gonna pop into the applications and go into my vert machine. It should connect this time. There you go. Yeah, it did require a little reboot. Uh, what I'm gonna do now is I could actually s first transfer over an ISO, so let me do that. All right. Now I'm gonna create a new virtual machine right over here. Uh, local install ISO forward uh, browse for the ISO image and go to browse local instead of at attaching a new uh, storage. I'm gonna go over to download and the uh, Windows ISO. We're gonna install Windows because I already have Linux, so let's move on with that. Uh, memory, you could set whatever you want. CPU, you could set whatever you want. I'm just gonna leave it as default. Uh, 40 gigs is fine. You could always expand this in the future and then enlarge it inside Windows. So I'm just going to leave it as 40. Uh, yeah, I'm going to call this Windows. And because we are not using a bridge, uh, we're going to be using a NAT. So basically, um, it's not going to have its own IP or MAC address. It's going to be shared with the host itself. And because I'm doing this on a desktop installation, I'm not really too worried about bridging the network cards. So if you guys are interested in doing that part where you are gonna install your own network card or an IP address or MAC address, uh, search for Bridge Utils and QEMU and you'll be able to find tons of tutorials. I'm gonna cover that in the future, but for now, we're just gonna finish up with installing this. So I'm gonna hit finish. And there we have it. Windows is now booting. I'm gonna go into resize the VM to this size. Um, if you guys ever installed Windows and you don't want to use the MSN account or Hotmail account or something like that, uh, head over to this little eye icon or the information icon and disable the network card. Uh, where is this? Nick. And I'm going to just say it's not active. Apply. Hold back to it and then I can finish the install. So when I create the user accounts, it's gonna force me to create a local account instead of using an internet account. All right, so here we are. Everything's all set up, installed. Windows 10 is done installing and I got enabled my network adapter. Uh, I should have internet by now, so let's give that a go. Uh, this is the new Edge browser, which is Chromium itself. Can I skip this? Why is it taking so long? Uh, let me head over to setting this guy up, taskbar settings. I don't think I could set anything until I activate the windows, but I really don't like the search bar or Cortana or task view. So I usually just remove those. And that's basically it. Now, if you want to pop over into the eye again, up over here, this is where you can actually set up like forwarding stuff or if you wanted to forward your USB or your um, PCIe devices like PCI host device, you could forward these over to your machine and have that enabled and working. So this is the menu where you would set all this stuff up. So that's basically the setup. Now, the main reason why I would normally use VMs on my desktop like this is because I have some software that is kind of suspicious that I don't want to run on my main machine or there's only specific software that works only for Windows that I can't run on Linux. I mean, VMs are great for that purpose. Given that it's not that hard to set up on machine, I even have it on my laptop just in case. Yeah, why not use it? Anyway, if you guys got any questions about this, hit it down in the comments below. And if you guys are new to this channel, consider subscribing. Also hit that bell notification icon so you know when the next video is going to be out. And as I say, my nerd cave, hack till it hurts.